Ahoy there, Captain Benzie here, coming at you with another episode of the Cat Skull Academy, the series that aims to teach you exactly how your spaceships work in EVE Echoes. Today we're going to be looking at turrets and how they work, to better help you understand the basics of blapping your targets to dust. If you enjoy this video or find it useful, let me know at the end by hitting like on it. Subscribe to the channel for all things Eve Echoes and ding that bell to make sure you never miss a video. Let me know what topics you want to see me cover by commenting below or finding me on social media, including the Canskull Cartel Discord. Details for all of that are along the bottom of your screen. Finally, if you want to go the extra mile to help support this channel and content, you can come join me and these lovely people you see at the end of the video on my Patreon page. Thanks for listening, let's begin. Of the six weapon types in EVE Echoes, four of them are turret systems, the other two are missiles and drones. Lasers, railguns, cannons and decomposers are all turrets, and all use the same basic principles when firing at an opponent and applying their damage. This video aims to explain those mechanics to you to help you get the most out of your guns. Now before we can discuss how turrets work, we need to first understand what a ship's signature radius is. In EVE Echoes, the actual size and shape of your ship's graphics mean nothing, and instead the ship's signature radius is used for working out interactions. Think of a signature radius as how large and clearly the ship appears to scanners and weapon systems. In short, your ship is represented by an invisible sphere, and the size of that sphere is dictated by the signature radius. The larger the radius, the larger the sphere, and the easier it is to target, lock, and hit the ship. Cruisers, for example, usually have a larger signature radius than frigates. Now, there are certain modules in EVE Echoes that can modify the signature radius of a ship. As examples, target painter modules increase the signature radius of their prey, and an active micro warp drive increases the signature radius of the ship using it. We'll cover each of these things in more depth elsewhere, but for now, that's what you need to understand. A ship's signature radius defines how quickly and easily it can be locked onto and hit. Alright, that covered, let's talk about turrets. Most turret systems in EVE Echoes, with the notable exception of decomposers, come in two flavours, short range and long range. For railguns you have the snub-nosed railguns at short range, and rifled railguns for long range. Lasers have short-ranged pulse lasers and long-ranged beam lasers. Cannons have short-ranged autocannons and long-ranged strike cannons. Decomposers only have one type of turret. These are then further divided by the module size, small for frigates and destroyers, medium for cruisers and battlecruisers, and large for battleships. There are some exceptions to this, but we won't worry about those for the scope of this lesson. When we look at a turret statistic page by long pressing on a module, this is what we get. So let's go down these statistics one by one and explain what they each mean. At the top we have the damage types. From left to right, these are electromagnetic, thermal, kinetic, and explosive. Different ships have different resistances to these damage types, but for now, suffice it to say that electromagnetic and thermal tend to be more effective against shields, whilst kinetic and explosive tend to be more effective against armour. As you can see, this Mark V rifled railgun has a tendency towards kinetic damage, with some thermal in there too. Tech level is simply the tech level that you must be at in order to fit and utilise the module. As Alpha clones cannot exceed tech level 7, they will not be able to use tech level 9 modules. Meta level is similar to how other games have rarity, it's kind of a representation of how powerful the module is compared to others. Power grid requirement is simply the amount of the ship's power grid that it takes to fit the module. The total power grid requirements of all fitted modules on a ship cannot exceed that ship's total power grid. This is to stop players fitting oversized modules to ships, as the large and medium modules require significantly more power outgrid than a small ship can output. Activation time is the time it takes to recharge a module. I'm sure you've seen the blue circle that fills around a module when it's in use. Activation time is how long this circle takes to complete a cycle, and turrets fire at the start of each cycle. As such, this is essentially the time between shots. Then we have the optimal range and accuracy falloff. These statistics describe the total range and effectiveness of turret type weapons. Optimal range is the range within which distance has no effect on your chance to hit. If both you and your target is stationary, then your weapons will always hit if they are within this range. In the case of this Mark V medium rifled railgun, this is 18km. 
Accuracy fall off is then the distance beyond optimal range, at which the hit chance drops from 100% to 50%, and then again from 50% to 0%. Now these are gradual drops over the full duration of the accuracy falloff. To demonstrate this, in the case of this Mark V medium rifled railgun, the hit chance remains at 100% until 18 km range. The accuracy falloff then is 10 km, so from 18 km to 28, the hit chance gradually drops from 100% to 50%. Then, from 28 km to 38 km, the chance reduces again from 50% down to approximately zero. Of course, targets are rarely stationary, and this is where the tracking speed comes into effect. Think of tracking speed as how quickly your turrets are capable of turning to aim at their target. The higher the number, the faster they're able to track. Short range turrets have better tracking than long ranged ones, and small turrets have medium tracking than mediums, and mediums have better tracking than larges. Now to understand tracking, we first need to understand the basics of angular velocity. This is a bit of a complex topic, and it relies on some heavy maths, but an easy way to kind of explain it is to imagine the sun's movement across our sky. The sun moves across our sky once every 24 hours. In other words, it completes one 360 degree movement every 24 hours, which then can also be described as 15 degrees per hour. It's fairly straightforward to calculate the angular velocity of an object orbiting a stationary target. Simply divide the 360 degrees by the time it takes to complete an orbit. A 10 second orbit is therefore an angular velocity of 36 degrees per second. Of course, things do become a lot more complex when it comes to figuring out the angular velocity of a ship when both you and your target are moving, and that's kind of beyond the scope of this video. For now, understand that angular velocity uses a ratio of your ship's transverse velocity to its range. If a ship is orbiting at 10 kilometers, it needs to be moving twice as fast as a ship orbiting at 5 kilometers in order to maintain the same angular velocity. Turret tracking then uses the target's angular velocity and the signature radius to calculate whether or not a hit is scored. Now, this is actually a really straightforward formula, and I've shown it on screen now. You'll see that these stats are all relative. If you double your tracking speed, double the target's signature radius, or halve the target's angular velocity, those will all have the same effect on hit chance. This hit chance also plays into the damage calculation. If you've seen the damage reports using phrases like penetrates or wrecks, these are firm hits doing full or critical damage. This is why it's easier for turrets to do full damage to a target with a larger signature radius. An important point to note is that a target moving directly towards or away from a turret has zero angular velocity, and thus tracking has no impact on any of the calculations. If a ship is moving directly towards a stationary turret ship, only the optimal range and accuracy falloff play a part in those calculations. If the ship has zero angular velocity and is within optimal range, a hit is guaranteed. This is why it is vital to never approach a turret ship directly, but to encroach at an angle that brings you closer to the target whilst maintaining an angular velocity. Whew. That's a lot of scary maths, but hopefully it helps explain exactly how turrets work. But what then are the differences between the turret types? Lasers deal predominantly electromagnetic damage with a little thermal, making them devastating against shields, but inefficient against armour. Laser turrets tend to have a fairly long optimal range, but suffer from a short, sharp accuracy falloff, which means the damage decays quickly if you exceed optimal range. Laser turrets also use a noticeable amount of capacitor each time they fire. Cannons, on the other hand, deal predominantly explosive and thermal damage, with a little kinetic thrown into the mix. They tend to have a very short optimal range, but with a long, gradual accuracy falloff. Cannons, notably, do not have an activation cost and will continue to operate even if your ship is completely drained of its capacitor. It's also worth noting that strike cannons have some of the longest ranges of all weapon systems. Railguns form a midpoint of ideals here. They deal predominantly kinetic damage with a little thermal, making them effective against both shields and armour. Rifled railguns have a solid optimal range and accuracy falloff, and whilst they don't quite reach the ranges of strike cannons, they do have significantly better tracking. 
Snub-nosed railguns have the shortest optimal range and accuracy falloff of any turret type, but they also have the highest raw damage too. Finally, decomposers deal predominantly kinetic damage with a little explosive. Notably, decomposers do not have an accuracy falloff. If you're not within optimal range, you won't hit. Simple as that. They have middling ranges, middling tracking capabilities, and also use an extraordinary amount of capacitor per activation cycle. Now, which type of turret you use is predicated mainly on the stat bonuses of the ship in question, as most ships will have a noted bonus to one type of turret specifically. Now, whilst it's not unheard of to fit railguns to an Amar ship, for example, you would need a very good reason to ignore established bonuses. If your ship gives damage bonuses to cannons, you should probably consider fitting cannons, or looking for a different ship if you want to use a different weapon system. Hopefully this has given you some insight on how to best use turrets in EVE Echoes. If you're looking to learn more about how the game works, be sure to check out the Catskull Academy playlist on this channel, as it's packed full of videos to help you understand the ins and outs of EVE Echoes. How does your capacitor work? What are propulsion systems? All that jazz. Also be sure to check out the various ship fitting guides on this channel to give you the practical application to all this theory. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments section below, or come find myself and the Catskull Cartel on Discord. We'll be more than happy to help in any way we can. Happy sailing, and see you in New Eden!